Next Real Estate Center in Guelph. Uh, Jamie and I are here. Uh, he's going to be joining in very soon. I sent him the link um, and we're going to be joining him. Um, uh, let, me, let me do a separate progress. Hold on. I'm going to, let's see. Okay. I think I, I think I did that right. I think I did that right. <laughs> it's fine. So this is, we're testing out new waters here. We're just seeing how it goes. I'm going to see if uh, Jamie will jump on here in a minute. Um, uh, yeah. I'm just going to see if he got it. You get it. Ooh, there he is. Well. Is. Hello, friend. Okay. Hello. Hello. So we're going to be live on your end and we'll be live on my end shortly. There's yes. been a bit of a delay in things. That's okay. I was I was running a little late. I had to make a shopper's run and that took a little longer than I thought it would. Uh -huh. um, well, I think I was like, you know what? This is just about right. You can't just pop into shoppers. I was naive. Yes. <laughs> I was very naive. Um, anyways, uh, there's that. I am impressed with the level of organization of most of our retailers right now. So we all just have to be patient with each other, I guess. Um, uh, so I'll just wait. For yeah, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just getting in and I'm trying to figure out where the, the link is to copy and send to you. So on the so, other side, so when, you, when you're on your B lot, when you're on the, the yeah. side, the side, thing it says add guest um and i i think that comes up with a link on there it's just like it looks like a little person sorry yeah i'm just i am not getting much of anything right now like i'm clicking everywhere and things aren't working so hang on let me try something here story of our lives these days it is so just give me a second Story. Uh, that's right. um, it says reload. There was a lost connection. Well, there's that. But I can see that we're live on my page, which is really yes. great. Yes. That's good. So let's keep going on your page and, and I'll work on this while we chat. Great. Um, how have you been, sir? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's been good. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been an interesting... Um, I would say an interesting week start to the week uh, yeah. in terms of things are picking up, things are happening, so to speak, if okay. that makes sense. How about yeah. you? Uh, uh, good. You know me, I struggle with not working all the time. So there's that. Uh, but I am like, I, I will say that Rebecca and I um, have had a steady stream of people in the last week uh, be very interested in talking about their options as far as real estate goes. Mm -hmm. um, and we've done quite a bit of consultations and I would say a little less than traditional this time of year, but still happening. Right. So like sales and buys, uh, consulting with people, not necessarily going out and showing bulk houses like we used to do at this time of year, like 18 hour days, go, 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 go. But I would say that like, you know, I get, I make appointments for consultations on the regular. I would say every day, if not, a couple a day and then nothing and then a couple a day and then nothing. So it's been, it's been very interesting, but it's really hard right now right. to know how to counsel people. So we've kind of come up with a couple ideas that are, have been pretty helpful, which is good. Okay. That's good. I, I mean, I saw, and your, a lot of uh, things that I have questions for you about. Yeah. Well, so. I saw your, I saw your, um, I'm just going to send you the email here. I noticed the Great. reason I didn't get on as early as I thought I would with you is because for whatever reason, the emails keep going to my spam. Uh, the invite emails. Um, so I saw your wake up Wednesday um, and yep. kind of, uh, you know, listened in for an anticipation of some of the stuff that we would, we would discuss on here. So yeah, go ahead. I, like mm -hmm. if you've got if you got questions, fire away. Like let's start with that, and and hopefully I'll get you live on my page as yeah, well. Yeah, well, 
Um, I would say that um, I'm just going to wait. I'll check my, have you sent the link? I'm just sending it now. Okay. I'll check my spam just in case. Not in spam. Okay. Um, no, I, I just would sent say it. that. I just sent it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Um, so we'll save a lot of the bulk of that conversation to when we get on both of our feeds. Um, uh, there, it, oh, there it is. Hey. Hey. Um, last time we did this, though, we got some feedback, and I remember I have to turn down my computer and listen on my phone. So there's going to be a bit of a bubble there where yep. we're super awkward about volume, and there may be a squeaky noise, just so everybody knows. Yes, be prepared. Be prepared for the squeakiness. Um, so I'm going to turn this volume down, so I may not be are. able to hear you. Well, I'm doing the black and white thing again. It's It was on the... It didn't do that on your reverse camera. No, it didn't do it on my reverse camera. So I'll do that. I'll flip it around. Um, do you see me on yours? I don't see you yet. Oh, Waiting to join. I see, I see you. Well, I see your reverse camera. Now I see you. There you go. I'm just trying to get the... Uh, and let's... Uh, let's. Now, where do you click? Okay, there I see you in my stream. Now, where do you click to actually go live with this thing? Start, I guess. Uh, so Go down live. on the bottom, down on the bottom, it says add to your stream. Yeah, I've added you to my stream. Sorry, folks. There we go. Stream on Mortgage J Jamie Basin Mortgage J. Okay. So I should be going live on my page at any moment now, except now your camera just turned around and flipped and you're upside down. <laughs> um, well, so I'm not seeing you on my stream and I can't hear you on there, but I can you hear me on your... Uh... I can see that we're live on your page. Yeah, I can I I just can't see you on the can you see me on your page? No, I see a sparkly glasses case on my page. <laughs> that's yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Um but I don't see you at all on the top. Maybe if I turn it sideways. There I am again oh, in the that, black and now white. Now you're in black and white again. I kind of like this. I'm not going <laughs> to I like I'm always curious about what I would look like as a blonde and I feel like this gives me that perspective. Um, it, it, it it, on the bottom it, on the bottom it says waiting to join, which I think is interesting and I can't see you or hear you. But as long well, as we I can hear as, uh, Oh, hang on a second. There's something that's still spinning on mine. So, let's just keep going with yours and mine will pop up and join in eventually. Um, I'm okay, just waiting for um, it. it says streaming I, on the page but when you okay. click the play button to go live, it's just kind of like hanging in limbo, it seems. Okay, can you see me? Like, am I square? I can't see myself. So yeah, you're fine. Okay, hey. As, um, as fine as you can be. Okay, well, you know, I'm trying. I, I put so a face on. Aside, let's, let's get on with this thing. So let's talk let's about... Let's get on um, with it. Let's talk about, uh, you know, some of the questions that you had from your Wake Up Wednesday call. Yes, okay, so... Uh, a bit of questions that we have is that like, so uh, some things that are happening with our clients when we're doing these consultations is the conversation comes up about recession, like that word comes up quite a bit, like market crash, recession, or because the stock market has taken a hit, right? Like as far as that, so people always kind of relate stock, stock market to real estate market, rightfully so. Um, but um, we've had quite a few questions. So what Rebecca and I've started doing is pulling the numbers from 2008 and 2000 to 2010 about median sale prices in our area um, and in certain areas of where our clients are. And we can go right down to like, like where you live. I don't know if we can really use that as far as like a predictor, because this is a different circumstance. We're talking about, um, some different scenarios, but this is the last notable time we could say that there was a dip in the market, I guess. Um, but what we're noticing is, is that especially Guelph as a bubble is that the numbers didn't really correct by large amounts. Um, do you feel like that's a Sorry, good comparison? Sorry. That's okay. Do you, do you feel like using as far as the mortgages go, uh, is that, do you feel like that's a good comparable? Like, is that something we can talk about or is that something we should be using as a point of reference for future uh, sales? What do you think? Uh, honestly, no. And the no? reason okay. I say that is because the reason that the market um, took a hit back then is completely different from the reason the market's taking a hit now. 
Right. So that's, and that's right? another thing. So we're not yeah. comparing apples to apples. So yeah. what happened then was, I mean, we, we, we all know, and I know, I know you referenced the big short in, um, in your call earlier. That's we all know movie. that if you saw that movie, you saw how precariously the U S housing market was, was built. Mm-hmm. Um, that didn't exactly happen in Canada. But the ripple effects of that. So what happened is, yeah. is that started a, a, a chain reaction in the U.S. because the there were a whole bunch of really, really badly written mortgages packaged together into uh, investments. And then okay. these investments were sold, were like people were investing in them like they would a mutual fund or, or anything else like that. Part of the mutual fund was made up of these really precariously um, written mortgages that ended up defaulting and it, it crashed the investment right. value. The ripple okay. effect was then that impacted the market. And then the market being impacted by that caused businesses to shut down, cut jobs, all of those things, which then had the ripple effect on the economy. Okay. So the difference between that and what's happening now is this is being driven. First off, this is impacting everyone. Everyone Whereas in that case, it impacted a, a, a group of people who had their money invested and the people who had the mortgage, like kind of two different sides. Um, this is impacting everyone. And the way it's happening is it's impacting everyone, but it's not really being driven by the investment market or the mortgage market. It's being driven by what's being put out into the economy first. So because businesses are on, businesses are on limited hours because they have to be right but the difference is some people who are out of work are are out of work with paid leave because the businesses are being given assistance to do that some people who are still working actually got raises because the the government's infusing it's essentially what's the equivalent of a danger pay um to a okay. lot of people in in that in that scenario um and so that ripple effect isn't the same. Back then, we didn't have mortgage forgiveness. The reason that the mortgages crashed was because basically people people defaulted on their mortgages. They couldn't make their mortgage payments. That wasn't because of an outside source. That was because of a decision they made. Okay. Right? And and so so there wasn't any type of of uh, deferrals or things of that nature happening at that time. So. We're not comparing apples to apples if we look back to what happened with the market then to what happened with the market now. Okay. So, and that was, that was kind of my thought about it. It's just that the question always comes that that's the most recent referable uh, incidents, I guess, of market decline. Right. Um, I got people, not asking, that sorry, I feel I like people asking me of what's going on with my live feed. So I'm going to quickly, because it's not, it's still sluggish on my side. So give me two seconds oh. here. No, no problem. Um, I yeah, because I don't see your live feed when I opened it up on this stuff. Ooh, there's that sound. All right, so I'm trying to do the go live on my side now. But let me just give me two seconds. Two seconds. I I'm hearing you through my phone now. Interesting. Yet, for some reason, I don't know why it's not uh, showing on my page. So give me a second, and I'm just going to quickly post on my page to go to your page. Okay. If that makes sense. And hopefully I'll hopefully I'll somehow kick in. I don't know why it's not. I don't know why it's sluggish over on my end, but it is. We did it okay last time, which is strange. Actually, it never did broadcast to my page. When I look back, I saw yours and not mine. But whatever. Um, I will just send a message to those who are asking to to just go to. Um... So should I close this one? No, no. Keep yours going. No, no, yours on, on my phone. Oh, I don't know. I kind of like seeing that sunset grill bag and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I, it's it's spinning, so I don't know why it's it's not um, 
It does say stream title on Jamie Vasey Mortgage Jedi page. I'm not quite sure why it's... But we're getting an echo on your side. That's not a good thing. Um, I have turned down my computer completely. Yeah. So I'm just going to... Uh, you know what? I'm just going to... Um, let's just do it on your page. Okay. And I'm just going to go over to my page and tell everybody to go to your page. What we could do in the future is just do it on one page and then the other. Yeah, that's going to be the best, forward. I think. Okay, so let's continue on. So, no, we're not necessarily comparing apples to apples if you take a look at... That's what um, happens. Those two things. This is just something that happens sometimes. Yeah. I, uh, so fun little sidebar here. I have a friend that's into puzzles as well because um, yes. I, I require sorting and organizing and the success of a puzzle. Right. <laughs> My brain requires that uh, to keep me idle. Um, so I just did a puzzle swap. We did a, we sprayed them down and uh, we did a puzzle swap earlier today. And she has a 2000 piece Star Wars puzzle that I traded her my oceans puzzle for. No, I'm telling you, you want to see this bad boy? Nice. Are we on the hair real estate collective page? Yes. Yes. Are we broad? Do you want to see it? Hair, hair real estate collective? Yes. Yes. Ooh. Look at this bad boy. Da, 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 da. That's awesome. Da, da, da. I am jealous. Oh, I'm just, it's got everything. It has okay. everything. So I'm going to, I'm almost done my other 2000 piece puzzle. And then I'll be moving on to that beauty. Um, she is a lovely individual. Thanks, Megan. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I get, I get that. I just think that people are looking for some kind of uh, idea. Like for me, I will say um, there are what Rebecca and I were talking about on our live earlier today on our wake up call Wednesday was that there is, there is a de decrease in showings. It's really not a good idea to list a tenanted property right now. Um, they tend to get less and less showings. It's really not a good time to try out the market. That's for sure. We've seen an increase in days on market, a decrease in showings, but we still see listings coming to market. We still see people doing what they need to do to trade um, in real estate. Um, as far as like, you know, everybody has a different scenario. There's a, there's different reasons, you know, for why they would come to market. But I don't think right now people are trying at the market. And it seems like prices have been fair. Um, so the reason why that question came about was that we have clients asking us about that. And what we noticed was, was that Guelph, because it's a bit of a bubble, specifically Guelph, that numbers didn't really pitch or dip in drastic amounts. It seemed to flatten. Like the median sale prices seemed to just flatten for about a year. So it wasn't like if you were coming to market, don't expect wild numbers. If you're if you're coming to market, don't expect that you're necessarily going to get asking, like always just list at fair market. Like it just seemed like I wasn't in real estate at that time, but from looking at the numbers, it just seemed like not the right time to try things out. Um, but to uh, uh, not to try things out, but to um, uh, to do what you needed to do in a on a market value based system. So anyways, I just right. want to kind of wanted your thoughts about that. But um, as far as uh, what I'm seeing in the marketplace is people talking about uh, an increase in mortgage applications. Do you feel like that's true? Do you feel like that, that people are exploring their mortgage options right now? I think so. You entitled this um, the eye of the storm because of a conversation we had the other week and yes. or the other day, I guess. And I don't. I don't necessarily like the imagery that it conjures up, but I think it's a yeah. pretty apt analogy. So when the, when when we found out back on Friday, it was Friday the 13th. Actually, it was Thursday the 12th when um, Ford announced that they were going to shut down the schools for two weeks following March break. Yeah. Um, and then it was the subsequent Monday where they announced the state of emergency. Yeah. So that started people 
that gave people a sense of urgency. So people who had, um, people who had things in the hopper, who had things in the works, moved with a sense of urgency because they weren't sure what was going to happen. And they wanted to get what they wanted done done, right? Mm-hmm. So, so people who were looking and kind of maybe taking a little bit of time suddenly moved with a bit more urgency because they didn't want to get caught up in whatever was coming. Mm-hmm. Then there were people who said, well, you know, like, like you alluded to people who thought, okay, we'll wait till the fall or we'll wait till the summer or what have you. So three weeks, isn't going to make that big of a deal. We can just kind of sit back for the three weeks, let this pass and then go back to things. So we had a flurry of activities back in mid March, mid to end of March. And then we were sitting here during that, that social distancing period that we knew was happening. And and then when it got extended and the more it gets extended, suddenly there's going to be another wave of a flurry of activities. So the people who said, well, we can wait it for, we can wait it out for three weeks who are now looking at things and saying, okay, well, we now know we're shut down for April and probably may. Um, and many indications are saying it's going to be longer. So we're not going to wait anymore. Um, so, those people are starting to say, how do I make this happen? And there's a, there's a personal comfort level that has to go with it on your end with, okay, getting comfortable going out and into somebody's house. And yeah, you want to be able to see what you're buying, but there's a really safe way of being able to do that by just going in. You don't even have to, if you're my realtor, I don't even have to touch anything. You know, you're going to open no, the door. No, you're going to no. wipe it down. I can wear my mask and I can wear my gloves. Realistically in an open house scenario, you, you or a viewing scenario, you should not be touching anything in the other person's house anyways. Right? Exactly. So, so you're just walking around looking and you yep. can do that and not have any type of risk to you. Right. Yeah, so a minimal I think risk people are starting to realize they're starting to realize that. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start to see things pick up a little bit mm-hmm. where we're going to see the increase in the, in the applications over the next little bit. That's going to come from people who uh, may have been on a, a two-week shutdown or, or three-week shutdown with pay, and now it's getting extended without pay. Yeah. Um, or you know they can defer a payment or three or what have you, but if this drags out for a few more months, I mean, lenders aren't going to let people defer indefinitely. No. Right? So no. suddenly it's going to be, okay, we need to do something. Um, so Mm -hmm. for those people, and it may be those people sit there and go, okay, well, can I get a job in, in a, in an industry or at a company that still needs people and can work remotely? Can I get, you know, any number of things can, can, can come from this and each one of them is personal, but ultimately what we're going to see is people are going to say, okay, I can no longer wait on the sidelines. I need to take action. Because they also recognize the fact that the longer they wait to take action, the more people they will be competing with over these properties. Right now, you kind of have a little bit of a, you kind of have a little bit of a, the people who get back to doing what they were going to be doing first. Yep. Will feel like they're in more control of the process. Yes. So that's kind of, that's kind of what I see happening. And then the other piece is, and Rebecca actually touched on this on your earlier call. Uh, you get people who are sitting there going, well, if I'm at home and if I'm working from home, suddenly I have time to, you know, fix up this room or redo the basement or what have mm-hmm. you. And they're going to be saying, okay, well, why don't I take some equity out of my home and reinvest it into the home? So let's say somebody who is thinking of listing their property, they now have a great opportunity where they can say, okay, I don't want to necessarily list it now, but I do want to list it in a couple months from now. And mm-hmm. if there's any chance that I'm not going to get kind of the appreciation that I would have gotten over the next four months, that things are just going to stay status quo, I can build that appreciation in by doing some renovations that increase the value of my property. So if I take a little bit of money out of the equity, knowing that it's going to get paid off as soon as I sell the home and invest it to make the home more valuable or, or more modern or what have you, um, then you that, that's the a, next bracket. Even. Sorry? Yeah. That like, that's a really smart strategy right now for people to be doing. So. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. And that's kind of where we're, I think, and I think like Rebecca and I touched on a little bit that um, our conversations with people have to, are going to become very complicated and very hard, you know, like a lot of the cons, like for every, a lot of our business is consulting, you know, like that's your business as well. My business for every sale or buy like that we do, there's a good chance we consulted with 10 or 10 to 15 other people. And one came out of it, you know, yeah. like it's, and oftentimes I, I, I think, right. And oftentimes a lot of those didn't turn into sales or maybe turn into sales like five years down the road or purchases two or three years down the road. It's, it's the non glamorous part, I guess, of our business is the amount of consulting that we do. So when we say things like reach out to us at this time, now is the time for us to be having this conversation. That is more important now, I think with the whole COVID thing um, than it was before, before it could have come off as just like, Oh, we want to talk to you about real estate. Now it's like, we're really like your realtors and your mortgage person is there for you. These, the, now's the time um, to be consulting with each other, like to be talking about, should I be pulling money from the house and how do I get it to the next bracket of sale? Maybe it was a 550 house before. How do I get it over 650? Um, mind you, we have a hard time knowing that right now, but it's not, not impossible to have that conversation or should I just be pulling money out of my house or should I be, you know, getting it ready to sell it? How long can I defer my payments for? Um, what, what's, what's the current standard? We also feel like that this is, really something to talk about is that there is a, uh, a almost day to day change in what's happening in our industry, a, definitely a week to week, but a day to day, it seems like I feel like the industry has adjusted. There's a lot of brokerages and a lot of places that are doing like, I know Remax, like I could speak for Remax that there's a, a standard being set that, you know, uh, Clorox wipes, hand sanitizers, like I've been going to Dixon's and picking up spray, like hand spray. Um, and and like, among other things, they do have a beautiful blueberry gin. <laughs> it's great in coffee. Um, no, I'm joking. Uh, but the, uh, the, uh, the, there is like, there's a standard being set and our industry is adjusting enough right now. Like I think I'm pretty proud of our industry for doing those things. Cause we are going into people's homes. But to minimal, like to minimize the risk of it, knowing that if we have a buyer that needs to buy for one reason or the other right now, and a seller that needs to sell for one reason or another, and they want to do that, well, we have to do our best to facilitate on the in between, however, whatever that looks like. So virtual tours, uh, accepting, uh, having hard conversations with our sellers about, and um, accepting offers that are conditional upon viewing. You know, because people may not may know that that's the house for them, but they want to know that they've secured it before they've even come in to look at it. Everybody's adjusting and doing what they need to do. But I think it's important to note that that it is still happening, that denying or trying to to stop it from happening isn't productive. And I don't think it's, in my personal opinion, quality client care. There's a difference between predatory real estate and service real estate, you know, like it, there's a, now is not the time to be bulk selling, bulk buying, bulk, like bulk viewing, bulk, like pushing people to purchase. And not that pushing is the word, but like encouraging people to go outside of their comfort zone. That's, I think it's more, here's the situation I'm in. Can we make that happen? And, and that starts with early consultation. Now is the time to, to be consulting. The, the, this is the big part of our job that is the unglamorous part, I guess. Yeah. So you reference that things seem to be changing day to day or week to week. Yeah. And quite honestly, this is, this is how I see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, a lot of times people are asking us what's going to happen with this, what's going to happen with that. And, and we're like, well, we don't know. I mean, we didn't see this coming. I think we do know, and, and I say that because I think we can safely say with hard facts that we are going to have some level of, some level of what I'll call disruption. So the way we were used to doing things is going to be somewhat adjusted until there's mm -hmm. a vaccination available. Mm -hmm. Like we know that. Mm -hmm. 
so that's that's a definitive. We can we can count on the things not necessarily going back to how we were used to doing them until everybody has the opportunity to get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. That's one. So what those what those um, kind of week to week, day to day fluxes are, it's kind of like if you were at a beach and you're like, OK, I want to go out to that sandbar. And as you're going out to the sandbar, suddenly waves come in. And those waves will have varying impacts on how quickly you get to that sandbar. But ultimately, you know, that sandbar is still there. Yeah. Right. And you're still going to get to it. It's just a matter of ignoring the waves and staying focused on what your goal is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I've been saying this from the beginning that it is a another variable. Our, our industry is pretty, um, uh, uh, resilient that way that we deal with constant moving variables every single day. It's never the same person, same situation, same time of year, same year, same market, same house, uh, same buyer, same buyer situations. Every everything about it changes and moves. This is another, albeit health and safety uh, issue, um, but it's. I, it's really a lot like like when people I, I imagine that this was a lot like when people started bringing phones into houses too, right? Like when you started this whole like having a camera phone, like we had to deal with that variable too. Don't take pictures of the houses while you're going through, no videos. Like it's another variable. There's another big hurdle to go over to get help people in their in their moves and their transactions and to keep keep eyes on the prize. I like where you're going with that with the sandbar that keep the eye on keep your eye on the prize keep keep taking your steps forward take your steps back that you need to take back but keep your keep your keep your gaze on that sandbar that that ultimate goal Mm -hmm. um which i don't and it's hard to know i wish i could tell people like oh we're gonna have a summer market and it's gonna be wonderful and you're gone now i don't know where you went but i will keep talking in my messy bedroom uh that i I don't think that we should be um, um, I think that we need to continue to um, oh there he is no that's okay you're on in now there you are there we go technical Um, glitch that's okay Um, I don't think that we should be uh, poo-pooing the idea of people selling or buying right now, I don't think we should be deterring those things. I just think we really have to take this new hurdle and everybody treat it like the fragile egg that it is and, and, and take, and take extra precaution. It requires extra hard conversations. And I do believe this is going to change the industry. It's going to change a lot of things. I don't think, I think if we're starting to talk about things like coming back to normal, there, there, there isn't a normal that I think that we're going back to and it will not be business as it was before. There's going to be, there's going to be all kinds of new precautions that are going to be put in place. But at the end of the day, um, these transactions are going to have to happen uh, for, for one reason or another for people. And we are going to have to, to jump those hurdles and take those steps to make sure that it happens in a safe and healthy way for people. So I can tell you from, the mortgage industry standpoint that today doesn't feel any like today in terms of how we do business Mm -hmm. is has very little difference uh, from how we did business in January or February. So right now interest rates are about the same as where they were in January or February. Right. Uh, Variable rates are lower, but fixed rates are about where they were. Uh, variable rates are about a quarter of a percent less, mm-hmm. which is as simple as one rate increase, and and they're equal. Uh, you know, Bank of Canada chose to keep the the lending rate the same today because they dropped okay. it so much. They only have one place they can go with that rate. They can either do another quarter of a percent drop to zero uh, because they will not do a negative rate, or the increase. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is basically it so there's not a lot to be done there which which gives us some level of certainty um in terms of fixed rates you know they went up a little bit because they were being impacted by 
the cost of insuring these mortgages going up a little bit, right? And so, so the cost on each file went up by a little bit because there was more of a risk attached to it with the economy being where it was. Now, the government is helping mitigate that. The only thing that's changed between like January, February to now with the way I do business is I can't meet with someone belly to belly. Mm -hmm. That's it. And, and, and to be quite honest, there was a lot of times where we didn't meet belly to belly, where this type of a thing or a phone call or emails was what worked best for clients. So we can do that. We were already doing electronic signatures. We were already doing all of these things. Um, you know, for some people, there's an adjustment that lenders now absolutely 100% of the time require income documents up front and, you know, a whole lot of documents up front. You know, personally, uh, myself, and I know there were some very, some very good brokers out there who were already doing that anyways, just as a means of let's make this smooth, let's make it easy, and let's make sure there are no surprises. So this is really should have been something that was in, in place for a lot of people anyway. Yep. So zero, zero adjustment on that front. It really is literally, we can't meet belly to belly. That's it. Like, that's it. That's all. Everything mm -hmm. else is the exact same. For people on the other side, like for clients, obviously some are impacted by, by income loss or job loss. Okay. If you are laid off right now, uh, even if it's, okay, we have to lay you off and it is with pay, but if we have to lay you off and it's going to be till whenever, and then we'll bring you back. You know, if you've lost income, there's no way of overcoming that with a lender right now. It's if you're not if you're not making money, we don't know how long this is going to go, and neither do you. So we cannot lend on history, so to speak. In that sense, you do need to be gainfully employed. You need to be collecting a check. Plain and simple. Outside of that, everything else has had some level of adjustment to it appraisals are still being done but they're being done in a modified way so a combination of drive-by like curbside appraisals um with video drive -by like they'll, they'll, so, sorry drive-by appraisals i love it yeah well they you know <laughs> they make sure the property exists and it, it appears yeah. as like the pictures on mls are accurate you know and sure. then and then they they get videos or whatever um, from the people, like from the, the, the people who are doing, who are selling or what have you. Um, and they say, yeah, based on everything we can see in that, this, now they may do, they may do, uh, this is subject, this, this mortgage is subject to an appraisal at a future date as, as a caveat. But outside of that, um, you know, it's, 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 everything's going ahead the way it normally would have. And in fact, to be quite honest, it's in a much more convenient way for clients. I, I, so aside from the house viewing component of our business and the general spring bulk um, that we see, like, really, we should be bulk skiing places right now. I should never be home right now. So that was a hard hurdle to jump in my brain. Um, but I agree with you. A lot of our business was be, the real estate transactions is that if you weren't doing things digitally before, like DocuSign, um, you know, uh, consulting the people on the phone or doing offers over the phone or through email, um, a lot, then you're going to have a, a harder a curve to get through in this industry, um, I think, moving forward, because I think this is going to become, if it wasn't already, like most of the way there, the new norm and the new standard for the business. And it is wildly more convenient. When I switch to more, I, I have a completely digital business. Like I barely work in paper anymore, um, which is great for the environment. Super Guelph girl, love that. Um, but the uh, I think that they that if you don't, it's a lo a longer learning curve. But now's the time to get used to that because I, it is wildly more convenient for clients. Like wildly more convenient for uh, realtors and mortgage people. Like we've done deals together before um, where I've just like, here's the listing, boom, can they do this? Or here's the, here's the documents, boom, you know, like it's instead of me, like, you know, we, there's barely a conversation that has to happen about it in order to get these transactions to happen and even at quick pace. So, and I think that's, nothing has changed for us in that way. Uh, Rebecca and I've still done things digitally, signatures, consulting, uh, going through listing presentations or going through listing paperwork over the phone or video call, all of that's the same. 
It's just, it's just basically the one part is the component of viewing and that hard conversation about what steps are next, because it's hard yeah. to know. You know what? It's funny because th what this does is, and, and this, here comes Jamie's hot take. Uh, Ooh, here it goes, guys. guys. <laughs> Here comes the controversial part, folks. Um, it's your helmet's what on. What this really does is it exposes the people you're working with. So, so. Um, this gives everybody a chance to see who is the exact same six months ago as they are now mm -hmm. and who is not. Right? Yep. So a couple of things. First off, and I hate to say this, but if you are working with a relatively green realtor or relatively new mortgage person and you haven't heard from them in a couple of weeks, you might want to reach out and see if they're still in the business yeah. because um, us, like everybody else, I mean, we perhaps more than anything else in this business on a personal side, we need to be good with money. Right. Yep. Because it's, it's the nature of the beast. We are self-employed um, and our, our business does come in ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. And so we don't get paychecks every two weeks, like a lot of people. And so you do have to be good with money and you have to prepare for unfortunate eventualities and all of those things. Yep. Um, you know, we don't get benefits. Like we, you know, when we go to the dentist, that's out of pocket type thing. Right. <laughs> and I'm not saying this as an oh poor us. I'm just saying it's a reality. You have to be good with money. And so there's a lot of people out there who can give the illusion of being very successful, but if they're, and they may be very successful, but if they're terrible with money, they're struggling right now. Right? Um, and so, yeah. and so that means, okay, who am I really working with? And, and, and reach out and find out because people who don't have, who don't have the wherewithal, and if, if, if they're not good with money, if they're not good decision makers, then do you want to necessarily be trusting them with yours? So it's one of those things where, you know, and, and you get a real sense of the people and their personality and things like this. I saw, um, and, and here's where the hot take comes in. Oh man, here it comes. I look at you and I see you wearing an Iron Maiden t-shirt and I know that that's you. Right. I know this is exactly this is when, whenever I see you, whether I see you at fixed year or whether I see you, you know, uh, after a meeting, that uh, this is you. Right. Like, yeah, <laughs> I see people who are trying to adapt and they're doing their, um, you know, I see things like, uh, oh, uh, a, a home home. Um, what's it called? Like home housekeeping things like the, the here are little chores that we do around the house or whatever. And they're doing videos on social media about this. Hmm. And I saw one the other day um, of, a, of a realtor when when main nameless doing laundry, wearing a shirt and tie. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, the only people who wear shirt and ties to do laundry are butlers. Butlers. And nice. Like, <laughs> you know, so that says to me, okay, this does not seem authentic. No, well, I, you, you know, know. And so it, it is, I mean, and it is what it is, but I think this, this is where you get a chance to figure out, okay, who did, who is it that I'm working with and, and how much can I feel comfortable with this, with this person as being relatable and, and, and someone who I, I, I trust to not only hear me when I talk about what's important to me, mm. but to put themselves aside and focus on me and what's important to me. I think that this, uh, this business, there's often a miss in the uh, authenticity to, to do your like hot take thing. Like there's often a miss is it was one of the struggles for me getting into this business was the um, bartending for many years and knowing what I know kind of thing. The, uh, the uh, getting into is the authenticity um, and sincerity um, of uh, where people come from, from from good good or bad places um i think that there's a lot of extremely well-rounded extremely thoughtful and people that are not on social media and have strong moral character and have strong ethics you know that will always do well wherever they go whether they're bagging groceries selling houses doing mortgages whatever they're doing, they will always do well. Um, it's times like this that people really come out and show where they're at. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think, I think that people tell you who they are when you meet them. 
uh, and you should listen to them. That's a that's a piece of piece of information that I was given many many years ago, and I tend to go on it. Like it's people will tell you who they are, and social media is a really great place to see that person. Um, mm. And to and to and I think that it, 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 yeah, I, I, it's I'll leave it there. Yes, because <laughs> now that, that we've already ostracized yeah. ourselves from a small group of. Um, Others but I think that it's, let's just, I just, we'll go from I, there. you know, me, I struggled with that in the beginning as it is anyways. So yeah, I, both did, but, <laughs> but that tends to be where my client base comes from, right? Is <laughs> they struggle with working with, with realtors in general. And I'm just, you know, I'm Sandy in my Iron uh, Maiden shirt and my, let's go see the local metal band, Sandy. <laughs> I, I said it before I, I had somebody say to me, um, you know, at a, at a function, how do you expect people to take you seriously if you're not in a shirt and tie? And I said, because anyone who knows me wouldn't take me seriously in a shirt and tie. Whoa. If I, I was told straight up that if I ever put my face on a billboard, a bus or something like that, my craft friends would craft bomb me and I expect them to oh, hold but I me to do that. that <laughs> yeah. All about glitter beards, man. When mine comes in after all of this, I'm glitter bearding it up. <laughs> But the I, I I was told I would be like completely like it would not it would not bode well for my circle of people, which hello people. Um, but I think that I think that we're in interesting times. And I really don't think that this is the time for us to be trying to separate from each other. We should really be banding together and doing what's best for the industry together. You know, like that's why I like doing things like this. I think it's just at the end of the day, man, we are client care at the base of this business. We are helping people. Um, facilitate their trade in real estate, their very stressful moves. And this is just another stressor. And that that's how we should be taking it is like, how can I facilitate that for you um, in a safe and healthy way and give you the best advice possible? That's why I call you as much as I have been the last little while, because I have so many questions. And it's hard to know what to say to people right now. But I mean, the only thing we can do is watch, listen, uh, apply and that's all we can do watch listen apply and I, and I, the predicting becomes a dangerous word right now yeah, i think here's the thing people should be acting uh, they should be decisive and act with purpose that's yeah. the best way i can put it is what do you want to do forget all the noise just yeah. simplify it as a what do you want to do if it's i want to buy a house okay then act with purpose mm -hmm. you can do that yeah. It may not be the way that you envisioned it happening six months or a year ago, Yep. but you can do that. So it's be decisive, know it, what it is that you want yep. and act accordingly, dealing with the facts that are in front of you. Because if you're, if you're going to wait to see what happens in three weeks or three months, you're basically putting your fate and your future in someone else's hands. Mm -hmm. Right. You're letting them decide. You're letting somebody else decide the terms in which something as major as this happens for you. Uh, yeah. And I don't think anybody should should do that. I mean, you know, we, we've talked in the past about first time buyers and how heavily influenced they are by their parents and their peers and coworkers and things like that. And when it comes to the decision making and we understand that it happens, it's very natural. Um, it's a byproduct of the. Um, it's a, it's a byproduct of the social media life that we live, right? Like mm -hmm. for those who, you know, it's, it's all about getting the likes and getting the approval on Facebook through the likes and then and, and how many views did it get and things like that. And, and as a result, people are always looking for that affirmation and, and it's kind of an extent of that in the sense that, okay, there's no, there's, you need to do what's right for you. The only yep. person's affirmation you need is yours and your partner if you have one and that's it right uh, yeah i i agree um i think that um now like before like you like you nailed it on the head like first time buyers is i know now working in this industry for as long as i have that the first thing i ask is does a mom or dad have to come and come to these showings because oftentimes they have a co-signer or things like that we see the property they love it and like oh i gotta show it to my dad and be like oh they're doing offers tonight like 
I try not to put my, my clients in that position anymore. Like, whereas I, we have that conversation ahead of time, who's on the title, like what, who, who needs to be involved in these conversations to shorten it and make it as less stressful as possible. I think, and a lot of people get their information from, especially real estate is like one of the most common investments. And it's something that people like to talk about. Um, and like, because it's, um, I don't know. It's just something it's it, it's a open market. Right. So people like to talk about it. People like to converse about it. They like to to speculate and things like that. Um, and always when we were when I'm working with buyers or sellers, there's always that outside friend or always that outside person that's like giving advice on the side, you know, like and that's fine. That's just another you know, that's it's good. You should always have you know, people you trust that you can talk to about it. There's people that you shouldn't listen to. Sometimes I get some weird balls thrown at me um, that are like, where, where did you hear that? Because that's very detrimental to everyone, you know? Um, but now more than ever, I think it's super important to talk to professionals. I, 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 cause while we, while we say things like it's hard to predict or it's hard to know, it's a matter of sense of, and what's happening when it's when those things become harder to predict and harder to know it's a matter of what's happening right now it's like what okay so okay you have a townhouse on this area well nothing is listed there there could be people looking to buy there uh is this a good time maybe uh are you willing to have people come into your house at this time under these circumstances and try it out at this price okay then maybe we should list your property you know, like not, and then the outside source may say, oh no, you'll be inviting this into your home or, or uh, now's not a good time to sell markets going to crash or, you know, those uh, big buzzwords, you know, um, I don't know. Like, I think that it's, I think now more than ever, it's a good, a good, it's always a good idea to have someone you can consult with that you trust that's a professional. But I think now more than ever, it's wildly important to have that person or those people in your corner. Uh, especially if you feel like your, your, you know, your deferrals aren't going to last as long as you need them to, or your, uh, your mortgage, you won't be able to carry. Few people I think that we're going to be talking to a lot um, in the next little while are people that live in small condos. I think that's something that I talk to quite a bit right now. Because um, I think the small quarters is it, especially being home for almost a month or whatever, oftentimes isn't playing out very well. Um, uh, unfortunate family situations, uh, fi unfortunate financial situations. It really People is going to be interesting to see yeah, what, it, what happens on the relationship breakdown side of things after. It, yeah. After it, it's already a, a big part of our business, like divorce, separation, things like that. It, I think it'll be a bit bigger of a con contributor and that's just, that happens after Christmas as well. So that's just realistic to say so. And it sucks and it's hard conversations, but that's part of this job. We'll hear a lot of that. The condos, uh, people that financially can't carry. Uh, so can I defer more? Can I carry? Um, and then maybe people that have invested um, in a house that are like first time investors, I think might be something we might see quite a bit about that maybe carrying the two properties and then the rent deferrals. Um, may not play out well uh, for them to c continue to carry uh, the second property and like pull out uh, their investment and try again another time uh, will, will be something that we'll see. I could see. And another thing I could see is that I could see um, downsizers being less interested in downsizing this year. So there's a couple, uh, a couple things. Uh, first, I want to point out the fact that you use the term, having weird balls thrown at me and I kept a straight face. So, well, good for you. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. You get an adult badge in this Thank conversation. Uh, <laughs> uh, the most professional thing I've done. On this. Um, so good. <laughs> the, uh, here's, I, I do get people asking me what's going to happen with the market. And, you know, I'm like, I'm not a realtor. But I'll tell you what facts we know. One, construction sites are shut down, mm -hmm. which means new builds are not happening, which takes away some people's strategies. So there are people who were going to buy a new build or who already got the advance notice of about a, a development that was going to become available for sale mm -hmm. in, say, 
June, but suddenly now the projects are shut down. And so people are like, okay, that might get delayed. All of this stuff. Investors, same thing. Investors who might have wanted to buy a new build um, as their next investment property, all of that. Those people are now in a situation where, A, that creates more demand for existing properties because mm-hmm. people who were going to do new build now say, okay, well, if who knows how long that's shut down for, how much it might be delayed for, do we need to look at existing properties? And could that end up creating a greater demand on existing properties? Conversely, um, that combined with people who are saying, all right, we were going to move to a bigger property or something and maybe deciding to put that on the back burner for a little bit reduces some properties that are coming to market or what have you. So I don't, I don't know. The long and short of that is real estate prices are always driven by supply and demand. We yeah. know this, right? It's all about supply and demand. And the yep. value of a home is dictated by what somebody is willing to pay. Yes. Right. It's got nothing to do with. I'm not going to say nothing to do. It has less to do with how many bedrooms it has, how many bathrooms it has and things of that nature, because there are lots of places out there that have the same number of bedrooms and bathrooms. It's what does that place feel like to the individual person who's going in looking at it and buying it and which one holds more value to each of them. Yep. And that's, and that's what, that's what sets the value of real estate. And uh, you know, how many people want this property, right? Yep. That's what sets the value of. And so because of that, there's no indication whatsoever that that's changing. No. It's not like everybody's throwing up their hands and saying, I'm not buying and I'm not selling. No, that's not happening. That's, that's yeah. not happening at all. Yeah. So, and, and it's not like there's going to be less of a need to buy or sell. Right. Exactly. The base right. of so, the business is trade is that is the need to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so right now it's a situation where when people and 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 you can read articles from any number of different economists from any number of the big banks and you'll hear four or five different opinions on where things are going to be in six months time or a year's time so what that tells me is if some of the greatest brains right now in our country when it comes to economics can't get together and say this is what's going to happen then the only thing for you to do is look in your individual situation and say, what do I want to make happen? Where, where am I at? It's always, you can look at it. You can stress yourself out about the broader strokes, uh, but really it's all about adjusting. What, where do I want to be? What are my goals? And what is my current situation? Now we go from here. I mean, we just had to do that with our business. Like Rebecca and I have this whole system for our business that we had all these ideas about, you know, timelines and goals and things like that for the year. Well, we just revamped everything um, about about a about a month ago, or not a month ago, but a couple of weeks ago, because we um, we knew that we needed to adjust. And so, same with your real estate purchases, same with your mortgage re- reevaluation, is that you need to look at where you are now. It not not and take the stress out of the broader strokes. It always comes that those are grand numbers and big broad strokes, all based on tiny, tiny, tiny individual people, like all individual people coming down, do we making decisions for themselves? That's that's ultimately it's where are you, what situation are you in, what can you do to get that to to get to the sandbar, basically, is where we're at, right? So yeah, it's hard again, while we say it's hard to know. It's also, you know, we just do what we can. Um, do you find like as far as like from a lender perspective that people are becoming like as far as like private lenders, are they becoming hesitant to to lend or is that uh, is that still a healthier market? Like I, I have heard from a couple people about, you know, maybe private lenders increasing rates um and on on a on a broader stroke brush stroke or do you find do you think that's hooey no i think i think there's still a lot yet to be determined on that front but i think what we do know is as the demand for private lending goes up so will the corresponding rates right so uh for those who aren't really kind of completely in tune with what private lending is private lending is generally done one of two ways it's either using a mortgage investment corporation or an individual a private individual and that means it's people 
putting in their own money to lend on mortgages uh, versus when you're dealing with a, a, a bank or, or a national lender or whatever, they get their pool from investors or investments, right? Like it's not accountable to any one or any one group of individuals. So for those people, one of the things that you have to watch out is with the individual private mortgage investors, they're going to be in the same situation as everybody else where they might be less inclined to give their money away because okay. they might be more mindful, I need it. Um, or if they're willing to take the risk, knowing that, hey, this person might have a higher risk of defaulting because they're temporarily out of work right now and who knows when they'll go back, they mm -hmm. mitigate that risk with a higher interest rate or higher fees. So those are all things that are very possible to, to see how it's happening. Mm -hmm. um, as of right now, I'm not, I'm not seeing people need to tap into that yet. Okay. Uh, where you will get people perhaps needing to tap into that is if they're off work for a lengthy period of time. Okay. All right. So right now, traditional lenders and alternate lenders are not really um, the one area where they've kind of made a bit of an adjustment is on business for self. Um, where they're being a little bit more stringent on that, where they, you know, in the past they would say, okay, let's see six months to 12 months worth of bank statements. Now they're taking a closer look at what industry are you in? How long have you been in it? What was your trend leading up to this? What can we anticipate going forward? So if someone was, I don't know, a, a personal chef, mm -hmm there's reason to think, okay, that you can't go into people's houses and cook for them right now. Um, or, you know, any number of things like that, where, where the industry hasn't adapted. Um, mm -hmm. I'll use my brother as an example. He has a music school. Mm -hmm. Now he made the adjustment because schools were not allowed to be open that he started doing all his lessons with students this way online. Okay. And it's meant more work for him because he's had to prepare the lessons and the music ahead of time, send it to the student ahead of time, and then sit down and do the half hour lesson. So he's putting in more hours by doing it, you know, but majority of his students were switched over and did that. And so his revenue stream hasn't been greatly impacted by it. There are going to be other businesses where it has. Mm -hmm. So in his case, what he would need to do is show how the revenue stream really hasn't been impacted by this. Other people are going to have a little bit more issue where they might still be doing stuff, but you know, people might shift more to a consultation role. So like if somebody's a personal chef, instead of going in and actually doing the cooking, they might be hosting online cooking lessons with the people and saying, okay, you got all your ingredients. Now this is how we prepare this dish, right? Mm -hmm. So there's yep. going to be adjustments like that. And, and it's going to be on the people who, who make those adjustments. You know, Ken's a great example of that where he's hosting yep. his morning and evening, you know, sessions and things like that. Right. Um, so those who adjust, but they're, they're kind of looking a little bit with more of a fine tooth comb on the individual industries and how they're being impacted by this and saying, how comfortable are we lending on a, a person whose sole livelihood comes from something like that? Yeah. And then the other, the other area would be people who were relying on investment income. So the elderly or the retired mm. or things like that, where an element of their income came from investments. Um, you know, they want to reexamine. okay, well, what do those investments now look like, right? So there's a, there's a little bit of that. But in terms of the private side of things, people haven't had to go there yet. And if you do have to go there, it's a conversation to have. Don't don't fear your reality is the, is, is the way I kind of put it to people. It's you have to do what you have to do. And taking action is never wrong. Staying inactive will always result in regret. Yeah, I agree. It's a, and the proactive things you can do are, you know, reaching out and asking those questions about what options are. Um, I just really like, I think that this is all going to be, I think the big major factor of all of this, like we were saying before, is that it's really just a matter of like, what is the timeline for this sort of this COVID-19 thing? What are people's tolerance levels for that on, as far as lenders, as far as jobs, as far as sellers and buyers? Um, and then making choices at the right times, like not making panicked, uh, fear-based decisions on, on your largest investment. 
I, I just don't, I just think it's now's the time to be having those conversations because the, the changes of day to day, the changes of week to week, everything seems to be making, being quicker. It's less, uh, it's less about um, making quick decisions as opposed to watching, learning, listening, being ready and deciding for yourself where you are at. Um, and more so now than before. Uh and these and private lenders and all of those things, it sounds to me like are still an option. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of what, how much longer and, and tolerance level, I think is what it sounds like to me. Yeah. So it's one thing is that everybody needs to take a step back. And to your point about having the conversations, they need to ask themselves, if I'm not having the conversations right now, why am I not having the conversation? Like if this is something that I want and I'm I'm choosing not to find out answers or get hard information, the only real reason for that to be happening is that you fear the answer. And that's not a great place to be. It, it's if if you're gonna be told, sorry, you have to wait six months, you're better off knowing that and planning accordingly. Yep. Versus or or tweaking your plan. So saying well, you know, because of this, you can't quite do X, but you can certainly still do Y. Mm -hmm. So knowing what those options are is never a bad place to be. No, but um, and you'll pardon the harshness of the term, but living in ignorance is not where you want to be. And I think right now, a lot of people are um, they are sitting back and 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 living in an unknown and there's no value in that you know you, we talk you talk about how the business isn't right now what we typically would see in a spring market but you and i have been in this business for about the same amount of time and how many times have we even on these facebook lives had the conversation saying wow like even last year i remember we said wow december just doesn't feel as busy as other decembers or mm -hmm. wow this january was crazy compared to other januaries or holy smokes, July was swamped or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the reality is year over year, as much as we like to think we can say there's a this market and a that market and we anticipate it being busier here and not so much there. I don't think, I think we have, we've come to realize that if it doesn't happen in one month, it'll happen in another. Yep. And that's yeah. all this is. This that's is all this saying, is. Okay. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen so much in June or July this year the way it did last year. But it'll probably happen in August and September. And here's the other thing. A lot of people tend to make these decisions around school and the kids going back to school and all of those things. Mm -hmm. well, there's a lot of question right now as to whether or not kids will even be back in school in September. Ugh, so, don't say that, Jamie. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just being very the real. worst news I've ever <laughs> I'm just being very real. I mean, right now. If there is no vaccination available, and by all accounts, having one this year sure. seems very unrealistic. Sure. How can we comfortably allow gatherings of thousands of people? Yeah. Well, no, I'm with you. I, I, I just think that we need to be patient and wait it out. It's all going to be based on okay. So, like real estate, we know like if it starts at this time, the market. If if we if things that the gates open and we get some good news and we can gather again and people will start thinking about their move then and then the market will be here and then uh and then if they can then if it's this long then the market will be here and then we'll have certain like ramifications as to de de decline in things i just don't really think that it's safe to say what those will be until the time happens like it's it really we have to work in like three months out three the same same as we always do three three four months out but the changes happen pretty rapidly daily weekly in our industry as to what the standard is, what uh, maybe that'll cool off because we were all just kind of scrambling to figure out how it was safest to go about our business. Um, but, but the fact of the matter is there are still people that need to trade. They're, they're doing it. We're doing it as safely as possible. Um, we're making it happen for them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, people that are speculating and wanting to still make those moves this year in 2020 Um depending on how long this goes on for, I could see people pushing it out into 2021 and just wait. Like I have people that are out that far already. I, I don't, 
I don't think though that I think that, and again, again, this conversation I've had with multiple realtors, there's no lemons on the lot. I wouldn't look to Guelph for uh, a deal or a steal. Uh, if anything, numbers will flatten and you just won't see peaks and dips that or the dips that you think you're going to see. I think we need to have that realistic conversation. Uh, South End town, like townhouse, isn't all of a sudden going to be three hundred thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like, it's not all of a sudden going to be like we were here and now we're way down here. You're going to see minor dips. Depend, like it's going to be very minor, but it'll look flat as far as. I mean, we have those. We have those on our back end order system, and Remax has quite a bit of uh, information to share uh, there as well, and that has been shared with us. Um, as far as what predictions are, but I think that people need to understand that if you're looking, if you're looking for this to give this situation to to show significant like dips in prices, that's probably not going to happen with unless there was something extremely drastic that happened. And I, so far, nothing nothing points in that direction. No, because. Again, we're not like comparing apples to apples. In order for a, an economy in any one area to, to, to cause property values to dip, there has to be something monumental that affects a mass of people, like a massive group of people. And while there's no doubt that this has, is monumental and has affected a lot of people, schools are closed, but the teachers are still teaching, right? Like they're, they're still, still working. Sorry? There's a lot of people still working. Too. There's a lot of people still working. A lot of people are still working. Um, so it's not a situation where, like even Toyota shutting down for a couple of weeks. They shut down for a couple of weeks. It was all with pay. You know, they've extended that a little bit. Okay, there's going to be a little bit more of a challenge for those people. But it's not like Flint, Michigan, right? So it's, right. it's you know, we're not having economy works differently and, and that's the other thing is we're talking about over the last 11 years just think about how much things have changed in terms of how much we do online how much we do via computer how much we how many people have work remotely now how much we mm -hmm. do by phone all of these things that have just become and it's funny because you know, at some point it became a demand of the people. That's why it happens is people demand being able to shop online, being able to, to do all these things. And now that we need to do it, people are resisting it, which is really kind of funny to me. It's like, wait, I don't want to be told that's how I have to do things. I want to do it because that's what I want. But I want it's, it. yeah. You know, the fact that 12 years ago, life was very different. People shopped differently. People banked differently. People lived differently 12 years ago. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, it's, it's not comparing an apples to apples scenario right now. And there's, there's, I don't want to present the fact that like for people to be opportunistic, because like you said, there's no lemons on the lot. There's no deals to be had. Yeah. But there are, there are smart decisions to be made. Yes. So, as more and more people come to terms with what their reality is going to be, more and more people are going to start looking and buying. Mm -hmm. And if you come to terms with that sooner than others, there might be less competition on the house that you make an offer on. Um, you yeah. might get a better interest rate now versus two, three, four months from now, partly because rates have a tendency to go up in June and July anyways. Yes. Right. Like that's a, that's a trend. And part of that has to do with, it's called um, tagging fees. So like every time they register a mortgage, there's a tagging fee associated with it and you get a discount on your first 9 billion as a lender, but everything over 9 billion, they charge you more. Well, that increases the cost, blah, 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 blah. It just means as the year goes on, the cost for them to write a mortgage becomes more expensive. Right. Right. So, so rates go up as a little bit because of that. And then they come down in like November, December, as everybody's trying to put a last minute push on, on their, you know, their fiscal year type thing. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's not an uncommon trend. Um, and so if we anticipate that that's going to be a trend we see, well, then doing it now when you are seeing 
I mean, you're still seeing rates well below 3%, you know, 2.69, 2.59, 2.79, 2. whatever, in terms mm-hmm. of insured mortgages, depending on what the promo is for the week. Like, those are still really, really low rates. Yeah. Like, lower than what we saw in 2018 and most of 2019. Yep. So. Yeah. Well, it's just, it'll be interesting. Um, um, I think that uh, we've covered a lot of bases here. Um, <laughs> there's probably still a ton to talk about, but um, we will likely do this in two weeks. Sure. I'm not going like- anywhere. Well, hopefully hopefully you know we're meeting for lunch and having fish and chips and you know doing all those fun things that we used to do like reminisce about the old times yeah i I honestly Uh, i have aside from walking my dog i have not been outside um in like friday friday the 13th was of march was the last day so it's been over a month um, I still have to go out to work every once in a while. I still have to, but the, I've gone from seeing like 20 to 30 people in person every day to my family, maybe Rebecca, and then a store trip, like maybe yeah. those things. Like I saw my friend Megan today for a little bit, like just while I was exchanging puzzles like on the table, take down the table. Um, and that was refreshing because it's yeah. nice to see someone that I like I literally told my friend on the phone I was like if I ran into you at this grocery store right now I think I would openly weep like because I haven't seen my people <laughs> in like so long um anyways but I think that every two weeks is a good idea right now yeah. maybe we'll do it again and two Wednesdays um and then I because I think things are moving in a in a in a strange pace uh so i think it might be good to just touch base and see where people where we're at and uh why not we got all the time to kill this just killed an hour and a bit yeah so. sorry i do want to touch on one quick thing before before we sign yeah down, if I could. um i one of the questions i've had is why why aren't why aren't the governments why aren't why isn't the province why isn't you know uh, the national government just saying we're shutting things down until September or whatever. Like, why are they doing this little month at a time teaser? Right. Um, I want everybody to think about what happened when they said we were shutting down for three weeks. And all the videos and pictures we saw from Costco and all those yeah. places. And, and, and that's exactly why. Yeah. Because that's the type of panic that would ensue if they were to say okay another three months all of a sudden everybody would and that would be very unsafe for everybody mm-hmm. to start going out in mass like that yeah so um just because nobody's saying it doesn't mean it won't be the case read between the lines yeah. they're giving enough hints to let let us know how long this is going to be status quo yeah. uh and so believe that believe that yeah no i'm with you 100 percent um like I think we just got to roll with it, man, and uh, do what we need to do. And as professionals, we need to stay on top of things. Uh, listen to our brokers, you know, stay, read the right articles, relate proper information and be there for our people. And that's all we really can do right now. I mean, yeah. the people are going to have to apply for mortgages and people are going to have to trade in real estate and we're going to do it at the pace that needs to happen. For sure. Uh, and I'm going to be working on my puzzles on the in-between and nice. uh, <laughs> constantly calling Rebecca to refine our business again, because that's how my brain works. Uh, but, but hey, oh, it's good to see your face. It is good to see your face, too. <laughs> we do see each other like once a month minimum. So this yes. is still very strange. We're at our month cap. Um, so let's let's touch base again. We'll do it on your page next time. Uh, you'll send me the invite and then I'll join your page and uh, we'll touch base on it and then feel free everybody just to send questions or comments or share information. I think uh, Josh from Royal LePage, a friend of mine, just shared some good information that Royal LePage has about prices, which is great. Awesome. Um, yeah, which is awesome. Uh, thanks for that, Josh. And uh, yeah, if, if you need more information, contacting Jamie, contacting me, reach out to your professional consult, consult, consult. We have the time. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. I'm going to go, go work on my puzzle. See you later, Jamie. Sounds good. Bye. Right. Bye.